Thank you for joining in. This session is about play-based learning. As adults, we all have memories of childhood play, times when we could pursue our own interests, create adventures, and explore new ideas through imagination, through pretending like an adult or a superhero. And through these experiences, we gained new skills, we tested our abilities, we formed friendships, and became increasingly adept at navigating our way through the world. In this session today, we will explore and understand what Lawrence Frank said, that through play, children learn what no one can teach them. By the end of this session, you will be able to understand the key milestones of childhood development. You will be able to differentiate between play-based learning and instructional teaching and how to maintain the balance between the two. We'll identify the types of play, we'll understand the benefits of play-based learning, and in the end, I will introduce you to one of our new titles, First Step to Early Years. As early as teachers, we should understand the importance of key milestones in childhood development. Scientific research over the past 30 years has taught us that the most important period of human development is from birth to eight years. During these years, the development of cognitive skills, emotional well-being, social competence, and sound physical and mental health builds a strong foundation for success well into the adult years. Although learning takes place throughout life, in early childhood, learning is taking place at a speed that will never be equaled. Now let's look at each one of these domains one by one. Cognitive development. It refers to the development of mental processes and capabilities. It focuses on how children learn and process information. It involves imagining, thinking, exploring, reasoning, problem solving, developing and rejecting ideas and concepts, memory, and applying what they learned. Social emotional development is basically the sense of self, self-regulation, who am I, and what are my responsibilities, following social rules, building relationships, and learning pro-social behavior. It involves conflict resolution, acknowledging feelings, gathering information to determine problem, working together to develop a solution. And all of this is part and parcel of play. When we talk about speech and language, it involves both expressive language, how we share our information with others, and receptive language, how we comprehend information. Talking about gross and fine motor skills, it involves the muscle movements, the small muscles and the large muscles. And of course, the kids, the children are actually developing all these domains as they grow old. In order to understand the science of learning, let's look at what Dr. Kathy hirsch pizak who's a well-known child development expert in the Department of Psychology at Temple University, argues on. She says that humans learn best when at least one of these four pillars are present. Individuals take an active role in the learning environment. They are engaged. Information is meaningful. Learners interact in a social context. This means that children learn when they are mentally active, engaged, social, and can make meaningful connections to their lives which are all characteristics of play. Beyond stimulating young minds to be receptive to learning, play is a necessary component of brain development for children. What is play-based learning? It is a type of early childhood education based on child-led and open-ended play. Play is indeed a primary and integral mode through which children make sense of the world and that is essential to their development and well-being. In addition, it supports skills like collaboration, communication, and creativity. And of course, the impulse to play comes from a natural desire to understand the world. Purposeful play experiences can be constructed to create deeper learning experiences that the child will remember and internalize. A great deal of research has concluded that play-based learning is genuinely and positively impactful on student learning and development. Play has always been a significant part of human life at all ages and cultures throughout history.
play satisfies a basic human need to express imagination, curiosity, and creativity, which are key resources in a knowledge-driven world. Play is a voluntary, enjoyable activity with no end goals. It is a joyful and satisfying experience. You will always find smiles on the faces of children when they are playing. And it is considered so important for human development that the United Nations High Commission for Human Rights has declared play as a right for every child. It focuses on means, not ends. It is process-oriented, and there are many cognitive, behavioral, social, and emotional gains from experiencing play. Now let's talk about the types of play. Sensory play, learning through senses, using all their five senses, sense of sight, sense of smell, sense of hearing, touch, and taste. So you would have different textured materials in, the, in that uh, sensory corner that you create in your classroom. You can use uh, Play-Doh, you can use um, sand play or you know students can play with water, they can cook and you can have different musical instruments as well in the classroom. So this is something which is going to help you create a sensory corner where you can have this type of play for the students to explore their uh, sensory skills. Then talking about exploratory play, learning by finding out. So um, the kind of activities that you can include for exploratory play can be mixing colors, shades, dark and light. You can ask the students to come up with a new color, mixing two colors, and relationships re between shapes, spatial relationships, numbers, and patterns and sizes. And through these games, you can teach them mathematical concepts, okay, and uh, maybe some science concepts as well. Then manipulative play, learning by touch, feel, handle, and mold. You can use blocks. Legos, construction blocks, wooden blocks can also help. You can uh, use uh, origami can one of the ways. You can have paper folding activities, cutting, pasting, and physical movement as well. Dramatic play is learning by role taking, pretending. Pretending to be people, animals, transport, acting out situations, role play. You can ask them to become, you know, make a train of all the children and ask them to run around in the classroom and the first person would hoot and uh, the rest would follow. Or maybe you can uh, come up with an idea of having um, a farm animal activity, or maybe a zoo, or maybe a pretend game where you make a shop in a corner and the students come and uh, buy stuff from there, or maybe a restaurant. So these are all the things which would uh, be part of dramatic play. Then creative play, learning by creating, drawing, painting, collages, uh, printing, stories, songs, music, and sound patterns. So you can ask the students to come up with their own creativity and imagination with all the little things that you have in that particular in that little corner uh, for creative play. And you know, when we talk about play, it is kind of like things that they would want to do, things that they would want to create. So give them that open hand, that uh, uh, freedom to come up with something that they would like to do in that particular time. Now you might be thinking that offering play can feel challenging when mandated programs and standardized tests are a requirement of many schools. But play-based learning is an effective practice for deepening understanding and engaging children. The key is finding a balance between academic expectations and the developmental needs of young students. In most of our schools, academic programs are teacher-led and meant to prepare children for grade one. The teacher comes up with activities or games to help children learn letters and distinguish shapes, sounds, and colors. Children may spend time practicing handwriting or filling in worksheets. These programs are typically very structured with a daily routine and lots of activities prepared by the teachers. Now, what we need to do is create a daily schedule that includes active indoor and outdoor physical play, integrate music, movement, and creative expression, and include teachers in this play experience as well. Now that we are talking about play-based learning, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce you to our new course, First Steps to Early Years. It is a three-level series and it focuses on all four pillars of early education, that is English, language and literacy, maths, general knowledge and Urdu. Precisely, it provides a complete solution to early years program. This course helps the teachers in integrating learning through play and practice, and it's developed to cater to the holistic development of child's learning.
and above all, it's aligned with the single national curriculum. In order to support teachers, there are, a weekly, planning, there are weekly planning guides which are merged with the table of contents in all the books. And there is an observation checklist for teachers as well in order to assess the kids. And there are activities to do at home for the parents. As I mentioned earlier, that in order to maintain a balance between the academic expectations and developmental needs of young students, we should create a schedule. There has to be a balance. So there has to be a schedule that includes indoor and outdoor physical play. So as you can see on the table, which has been taken from the book First Steps to Early Years Level 1, there is suggested allocation of time for each activity where you can have time specific for morning assembly, then whole class or whole group activity, where it could be health inspection, national anthem, sharing of life experiences. This is something that we usually do in our circle time in, in earliest classes. And it is also suggested in the single national curriculum as to how to go about the routine in an earliest classroom. So the same framework has been considered while making this table. And there is time allocation given so that there is a balance between academic um, you know, aspect of the lessons as well as giving opportunities for students to have an active involvement in play, indoor and outdoor, both. High quality classroom is well thought out with intentional spaces and not just free for all where children jump from activity to activity and teacher is disengaged and spends her time in managing behaviors. The classroom environment is designed to engage their minds, meet their sensory needs, and offer practice with academic content. Play-based classrooms should include a block center, math center, science center, book nook, dramatic, dramatic play corner, sensory table, a felt table, art center. And many of the materials in each center can be integrated. They can be used from one corner to another. They can be moved around. So you shouldn't be complaining about lack of resources. You can use them you know, one way or the other. Now, this is something which helps you in creating those corners. And if you look at the single national curriculum, they're called Nisabi Goshe. You must have heard this term. And the book that I was just referring to, First Steps to Early Years, gives thorough uh, in, you know, guideline to teachers as to how, develop, how to develop those Nisabi Goshe or learning corners for the students. Okay, now I'll share a, just a quick checklist for all of you in order to construct your different learning corners. Starting off with the block construction corner, you can have a set of wooden unit blocks, cars and trucks and railroad trucks and trains, toy people, toy animals. You can have dinosaurs or farm animals. So this is something which is going to help the kids explore their own creativity, come up with their own critical thinking skills, what they can make out of those blocks, how can they stack them together, balance them. So this is something which is going to help them in uh, not just uh, you know, improving their cognitive skills, but obviously their fine and gross motor skills at the same time. Now coming to dramatic symbolic play corner, you can have a play stove, you can have a refrigerator or a kitchen sink, dolls and doll accessories, small table and chairs, dishes and play food so that they can cook and make meals, dress up clothes for both boys and girls and you can buy or borrow these and a basket of shoes or hats or something that they can actually use, the things and props or maybe props also. So things that they can use to dress up, to role play, to act out something. So this is something that can help you in developing your dramatic or symbolic play corner. The manipulative corner is used for activities that help develop fine motor skills, such as puzzles and Legos, Play-Dohs, uh, lacing toys, stacking toys. So maybe you can have uh, soft toys in it as well because they can use their senses to touch different textures and feel them. Moving on to book nook, you can have paper, pens, pencils, stamps, like a mini office, shelf of books. 
And this doesn't mean that you don't have books anywhere else in the room, but you can have a shelf with all the books in there. And you know, through that, you can also teach the kids how to look after their books and their things that they have in the classroom and stuffed animals as well. Stuffed animals for the, for the characters that they find in the stories, they can enact them. Then um, you should have a science and a math corner, math corner with uh, different shapes, with counters for science, you can have plans or different apparatus for the students to uh, look at and work with in order to explore the world around them. Benefits of play-based learning, cognitive development. With cognition, I'm sure you can recall, it's all about imagining, reasoning, thinking, making sense of the world around them, agreeing or disagreeing ideas. And um, so not only they enhance their literacy and language skills, through play, they improve their problem-solving skills, they build sensation and perception abilities, and they learn to use symbols to represent ideas. During dramatic play, children use language to talk to each other. They represent and act out stories, practicing their language and storytelling skills. During art, like making collages or adding names to drawings, helps, helps children learn to represent ideas through images, use letters to convey meaning, and understand the purpose of writing. When children play, they use their imagination. And imagination is all about symbols. A laundry basket can represent a car. A stick can symbolize a fishing rod and so on. Understanding symbols is key to reading and writing as letters are symbols. The same goes for mathematical concepts and numbers. Children develop an elementary understanding of scientific concepts as they learn how the world around them works. And not only does it en enhance their thinking and reasoning skills, it keeps them motivated. And the natural ability, we are all curious by nature, so it helps them enhance that curiosity about the world around them. Social emotional learning is when children acquire and effectively apply the knowledge, attitudes, and skills necessary to understand and manage emotions, set and achieve positive goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive relationships, and make responsible decisions. Children develop socially and emotionally through play as they imagine the world from a different perspective, understand the differences between themselves and others, learn how to interact with others and more. Trying on different roles during role play helps children learn how other people feel and think. When they role play and act out scenarios, they're exploring the possibilities of their actions in the real world. The social aspect of play helps children build friendships and learn how to cooperate and work together. It offers opportunity for them to learn to resolve conflict. Through play, children build muscle mass and coordination, explore different tactile experiences, and get a healthy amount of exercise. Now I'll show you examples from the book First Steps to Early Years, and I'll tell you how do they use the play-based approach where they encourage the students to take part in different activities and then integrate that with their learning experience and experiences and um, developing all the four domains of early childhood. So at this example that you can see on the screen, here the students are supposed to make a puzzle uh, using the desk. So this is something which is going to help their physical development. Then you've got this example of picture comprehension, which is about kindness, so social emotional development is done. And the students can also role play on this. Then there's another example of um, students should be putting these pictures in the right order, in the right chronological order. So the sequence of the story, this is something which requires critical thinking skills. So the students improve upon those skills. And then uh, looking at this picture with all the key vocabulary words, this is going to help enhance their language skills. Uh, more examples as to how to integrate poem and song and actions to the learning experience of the students. So it's done in the book, it's done through rhymes. 
and there are notes for teachers as to how to go about um, you know conduct how to conduct the lesson with actions how should you do that in the class and then there are examples for students to make sense out of stories and try to get the uh, the message uh, which is being given from that story so this is something again which helps in their critical thinking skills and making sense of uh, what's happening in a story that is also important then in the book you'll also find activities for introducing mathematical concepts for example if you want to teach pre number skills and the level for level 2 nursery you can use various shape cut out and arrange them in a capture or even draw them on the board and give children a set of assorted shapes to select and choose from then classification of objects can be done by using real life objects to first demonstrate the topic for example a set of three pencils which are short shorter and shortest so you know there are ideas for teachers hand, for hands on activities so that they can introduce mathematical method, mathematical concepts to the students and that is for all the three levels so more examples from the book in order to tell the students the concept of surprise there are notes for the teachers at the bottom of the page that they should arrange a mock party and then give a real life experience you know uh, to the students as to how would a surprise party uh, how would it feel like getting a surprise party then you will find um, patterns you know making patterns on the sand so there are activities uh, for that as well so this is something which is going to help their fine motor skills and help develop their sensory uh, skills as well and then the sense of science so there is an element of uh, with the general knowledge book there's an element of introduction to science concepts in this uh, in kg as well and uh, that is also done through activities and experiments urdu ki kitab mein kis tarah se play based learning ko ek tarah se weave in kiya gaya hai integrate kiya gaya hai jis tarah ye kahani aapko ek safe pe nazar aa rahi hai jisme zikr hai ki animals hai aur wo jungle mein hai janwar to teachers ke liye note hai ki they can ask the students to make masks and then wear them and then role play the whole story on the other hand uh, jo dusra page hai us pe bhi aap dekh sakte hain ki uh, encourage kiya gaya hai teachers ko ki wo bachcho ko bahar le jaye aur gend ke sath khilaye to ye bhi tareeke hain bachcho ko kis tarah se play ke sath yani khelne ke sath sath wo kis tarah se uh, vocabulary building kar sakte hain um, aur kis tarah se apni harf e tahajji seekh sakte hain uske ideas bhi is kitab mein diye gaye hain towards the end i'd like to summarize today's discussion where we've talked about play based learning and we've looked at how it helps uh, students in developing their cognitive skills their physical skills their social emotional skills their language skills so in a nutshell as albert einstein said that play is the highest form of research so it is not just academically not excelling just academically but as a person getting to know about the world around you and knowing how to respond in this world and that's what you learn from play and in the end i'd like to give a quick um overview as to why is it important to use play based play based instruction in our classroom because we are leaving the information age we are getting the factoids we are getting the factoids is enough we are entering a new era a knowledge age in which information is doubling every 2.5 years so integrating information and innovation is the key and especially when we look at you know imagine the workforce of 2040 okay they need to have certain skills in order to excel and compete um in their professional life so they should be equipped with all these c's that we usually talk about the c's of 21st century skills and in which we have the knowledge the content knowledge definitely it is important then communication skills collaboration critical thinking confidence in yourself and creative innovation and all of this can be attained through play because when the students as i mentioned earlier when they talk to each other they negotiate meanings they try to put their point across when they agree or they disagree with something they accept or reject ideas that is when they communicate and even though if they disagree they 
they play together, they collaborate for a combined goal, maybe. And then this gives them, when you give them the option of coming up with um, something that they want to do, they will get confidence and they will definitely improve their innovation and imagination at the same time. So preparing our students for the times to come where there will be a lot of competition, even more than what we had to face when we jumped into our professional lives, we have to use a play-based approach. Thank you very much. This is the end of the session. Now we'll have 15 minutes for a Q&A. I can see your questions in the chat box. We'll address them. And if you have more questions, you can unmute your mic and you can ask